The life of thousands of people were transformed in an instant following the explosion at the West Fertilizer Company. The house lifted up and I grabbed my kids and we were headed out the door of the hallway and the room and just heard an explosion and the windows blew in and everything. There was the structure next door that was fully engulfed. It was total chaos. I mean, it was it, people just running and screaming and hollering, you know, running into the streets, coming out their homes. People just shocked. Residents vividly recalled the horror. 15 people died in the disaster. Most of them were first responders. Fire trucks were part of the mangled metal left behind at the blast site. A nearby school and a senior home were gutted by the force of the explosion. In a town of less than 3,000 people, almost everyone knew one of the victims. Uh, did you know any of the people that responded to it initially? All of them. Yeah, all of them? Yes. Have you been able to hear back from any of them? I mean, no. no. My son Sammy and them, you know, we're, we're alive today because, you know, they're, they're heroic actions. P. Arias and his family lived a half mile from the fertilizer plant. A year later, he has rebuilt his home, but many of his neighbors are still trying to repair the emotional damage. So when you sit back and reflect on things, then it kind of kicks in like, wow, did we really go through this? Um, it was like a scene out of a movie, you know, it was real tough. There's some people that are stuck. West Mayor Tommy Mushka claims that of the more than 200 homes that were destroyed, 138 have been rebuilt. Two schools were badly damaged in the explosion. They've since been demolished, but haven't been rebuilt. Students go to class in temporary facilities. The school district received a $20 million grant from FEMA. In the heart of the Lone Star State, the tiny town is now considering a new fertilizer plant. Mayor Mushka told residents that a new facility would be made with steel and concrete. The ammonium nitrate behind last year's explosion was stored in wooden bins. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board investigated the West explosion. This was probably the biggest explosion that we have been involved in terms of the impact in a community. In other countries, they, and, and, and in, in a number of places in the United States, they use concrete beans, you know. Here they were wooden beans. The agency's chairman, Rafael Morey Razo, worries that more chemical accidents are waiting to happen in other parts of the country. A year after the disaster in West, the question remains what lessons have been learned. The chemical industry is vital to the U.S. economy, but federal investigators claim that facilities which hold hazardous materials such as fertilizer plants and oil refineries could be potentially dangerous to thousands of communities across the U.S. Those facilities include ones like the Chevron refinery in Richmond, California, where a huge fire in 2012 sent toxic fumes into the air, sickening thousands of people in the San Francisco Bay Area. The chemical safety crisis was again exposed when a chemical spill in West Virginia contaminated the water for hundreds of thousands of people. We really have to make a commitment to, to uh, adopt inherently safer technologies to prevent these things from happening. In Texas alone, at least 74 other sites have large stores of the potentially explosive ammonium nitrate. According to the Dallas Morning News, 20,000 people live within a half mile of these sites. The state fire marshal has suggested changing the way chemicals like ammonium nitrate are stored, but business-minded lawmakers have been resistant to new regulations. While regulators and policymakers wrestle about how to make their city safer, the residents of West remember the victims. When that explosion went off, everybody in the neighborhood went to check on each other not even thinking that there may be a second explosion that will go off. That's the kind of people that live here in West, people who don't care about any harm about their own self as much as they care about their neighbors. That's what kind of people that live in West, and these people I'm proud to be a neighbor of. West may still be a long way from fully recovering, but their faith in each other keeps them marching forward. Ramon Galindo, RT.